friends. Hey, welcome. Why don't you come on in? This is undoubtedly the scariest space in my home. For a room that has three functions, it is so dysfunctional. It's like a horror movie every time I walk through the door. And heaven forbid I have a neighbor or a friend who drops by spontaneously because this space often looks like this with shoes and coats and dirty laundry piled up. So thanks for joining me here today. My name is Jenna Lee. I'm restoring home, family, and spirit. And today we are restoring order to my entryway laundry room slash mudroom. And I would like you to please press the subscribe button if you haven't already so you can follow this process. And let's get started. In hopes that this can be a open discussion, I wanna bring you along with me and take you through the process from the very beginning to how to start an overwhelming project. How do you plan and design it and how to start it and how to go through each step. I also want to invite you to make comments, come up with some ideas of your own. If you have a light bulb moment in the middle of this video, would you please pause the video, make a comment down below and continue watching. I really wanna collaborate here and share some different ideas. I hope it inspires some light bulbs. Get up, stop stressing over the overwhelming spaces in your home and how to get started tackling them one step at a time. And just the way that this old farmhouse is designed, we have four different exterior doors that go out to wraparound porches. And this, this is the one where people come through the most. <laughs> so I am going out on a limb here and opening up the scariest, nastiest room in my house in hopes that you can come along this process with me. Where is a girl to start? If you are a person who has kids, pets, a husband who can't keep his shoes and underwear off the floor for the life of him, then maybe you are a human. <laughs> And maybe you have a space that needs a little bit of design, direction, redirecting, just an overhaul, a total makeover. So I've really broken my thought process down into steps. And of course, the first step is to admit that there is a problem. I know that sounds familiar, but it's true. What are some of the trouble spots that are happening in your space? What is not functioning? What is the problem here? That's number two. Third is to face the reality of your budget. Because honestly, you could scroll through Pinterest all day long, pinning dream boards of mudrooms, entryways, and all of the things, laundry rooms. I know I can. So really figuring out beforehand, <laughs> before we start the dreaming, I'm all about the dreaming, but make sure that it's in the realistic guidelines of what you're able to afford and what you can do right now. This is where I want to introduce you to the queen of DIY and home design. I am partnering up with my friend Julie over at capturingwonderland.com. What I love about Julie is she is a passionate homemaker. With five children, she's a homeschooling mom and she's also passionate about DIY and on an extreme budget. So as soon as you are done watching this video, I would like you to head on over to Julie's channel. I'll have that posted down below. Watch her entry makeover design video. We're actually doing these projects together at the same time. She's already given me plenty of great ideas. She's got so many ideas for thrifty, budget-friendly DIY projects. So head on over there, show her some love, give her a subscribe, and let's get back to this video. Okay, and number four is to make a plan. I have to say, this is something that I struggle with. I am so gung-ho and ready to just take charge, run into the scene of action, but I don't always have a plan. I think I have a plan, but it's not well organized and written out. So this time, we're making a plan, guys. Part of this plan can be what can I get rid of? Is what is really messing up my groove in here? For me, <laughs> I have lots of things that I could get rid of in this room, okay? And then also, what do I have already that I can 
repurpose, reuse, resource, get resourceful. Maybe just use what you have in a different way. Make a timeline to go with your plan. What needs to come first? Um, maybe even put a date on there. I'm going to start on this date. I want to be done by this date, okay? And lastly, the very last step. Go and do the thing. Make the plan, make the list, what needs to happen, and execute. Okay, so let's get down to the nitty gritty here, guys. I have made a list of the dysfunctional things that are going on in this space, okay? I don't know why a family of five has to have a bazillion shoes. Okay, do you have this problem? Moms, dads, do you have this problem? Let me know. Why are there so many shoes? Another thing are coats. Right now we are in the dead of winter and there are a lot of sweaters and coats and they're important, but they're everywhere. And this, this what's happening behind me, this action is not working. <laughs> My five-year-old can't reach the coat hook. There is constantly laundry being moved through here, okay? Like I said, family of five, we are doing laundry every day here. So I really need to figure out how to function with the laundry, dirty laundry going in, clean laundry coming out, having a space for that to go without it looking like a complete bomb went off in here all the time. Another thing is the flow of the space. Now because this room is so small, we're looking at about five feet, possibly by eight feet in here. It's not very big. The flow needs to function in here. People need to come in through the front door be able to take off their shoes, hang up their coat, and not leave their crap everywhere. I also can't open my dryer door all the way. It bumps into this shoe chest, and <laughs> so then I've got socks and underwear and laundry falling out onto the floor, getting lost, not making it into the basket. It's just, it's, it's not working. There is so much clutter. <laughs> there are power tools towels, hats and gloves. I swear, if there is an open space, for some reason, to somebody, this looks like the perfect place to drop something. Oh, we'll leave it here, we'll handle it later. It never gets handled later. So there's a major clutter problem going on on top of my machines, including soaps, cleaners, laundry soap. They all need a place to go. So if that wasn't overwhelming enough for you, it's part of the process, dragging out all the nitty gritty and the ugly so that we can find solutions. Now, luckily I have made a plan. I have made a list of solutions to match each problem. Because it's an entryway and it's the first impression that people get when they come to my house, I want it to be pretty. I want it to be beautiful. And so the main goal for me here is to figure out how I can conceal the coats and the shoes and the dirty laundry um, make that functional as, as possible but also beautiful. So I have made some design boards that I want to share with you guys and this has been so much fun. In fact, I think I'm going to do this every time I want to tackle a project and I'll show you exactly what I've been doing. I hop onto Pinterest or Google and I save the image and I go onto Canva, canva.com. This is not an affiliate partnership or anything. This is just a girlfriend to a girlfriend. This is what I do. And I make a collage, okay? And I just save those images. It's just for my personal use and start putting them up there and looking at textures, colors, design. In my design plan, I'm going for a farmhouse meets Victorian cottage. So here on my dream board, I want to go with a wide beadboard that goes along this wall and this wall. And I'm thinking a wide beadboard that goes all the way to the top of the ceiling. So I'm thinking about doing a pegboard along here, maybe one or two that I could hang those laundry bags up on um, or maybe some other things as well. If my budget can allow, I'm thinking of that wide beadboard on both of these walls. I'm thinking of a creamy white just to keep it really light and bright in here. On this back wall, I would love to do a feature of wallpaper. Wallpaper or fabric, I'm not quite sure what my budget will allow. I know both of those things can be kind of expensive. I wanna do color, so I'm thinking about doing a blue, a simple, not a very loud pattern. 
them, but something that does have color. And that would be the backdrop behind these shelves, which I think would be so cute. And I love the idea of adding a little bit of color. I'm really, really craving color. For the random clutter that is piling up on the machines, I would like to put some shelves on this back wall. Starting here and going all the way over the window to the other side. And I'm thinking like one, two, and three. One that meets at the bottom of the window. Maybe we'll just do two, I don't know. But what do you think about shelves going across the window? I know this is kind of out there. I will show you a picture of what I'm talking about on my design board, but I think it could be kind of cool. And on these shelves could go baskets and canisters. I could put my laundry soap up there and pretty canisters, pretty glass cleaning bottles that I can fill up, something along those lines. Then below the shelves, I want to do a folding tabletop. Wouldn't that be fantastic to be able to take the laundry up and have a place to fold? I have never had a folding table. So I'm going to take you guys out. We're going to go out to the barn and I want to show you some of these antique doors that are sitting out in my barn that I want to be able to use. I was thinking of using one of those antique doors as a folding table. So let me know what you think about a antique table, antique door folding table. <laughs> Pin down in the comments. Do you think that's a good idea? It's a beautiful January day and we are going to take Coco. Come sweet. We're gonna take Coco and Nia on with us to go to the barn. Come on girls, let's go, come on. This old barn shed was here when we got here, obviously. And when they did the remodel in the kitchen and in the laundry room, and all the bathrooms, of course, they took out all the old trim, a lot of the, come here girls, a lot of the wood floors and old doors. I don't know why there's so many doors. This is not a very big house, but there are so many doors out here. So. Here are some of the door trimmings that I was talking to you about. I have a lot of pieces like this nice solid wood that I could use to make pegboards out of or even just adding some old trim. If you have some good ideas for me on what I could use these for in this project, please let me know. I would love to know. I also have a lot of pieces like this that would go on top of the doors. I also have some pretty ones that went around the windows. So. Now for the doors, I have these. I've measured them out. They're actually too narrow to be used for the tabletop. My tabletop, I decided needs to be 67 by 35 inches, but I do have another door option that I wanted to show you. There are these giant doors, which I'm assuming were used as pocket doors in the house. I have no idea where that could have been used, but here they are. This panel door could work. So the 67 by 35, I could go along here and just kind of take those panels, but I would have to cut right in here. But this piece could work for my folding table. So let me know what you think about that. I know it almost pains me to use this. I thought about propping this entire door up on the wall and using it like big paneling <laughs> as a feature wall. So I don't know. But I definitely do need the folding table. I think that would be much more functional. Let me know what your thoughts are on that. We're going for concealing here and making this visually beautiful. So I would like to put up underneath our folding door a apron curtain here. So with this curtain, I really want to add a punch of color and design. I'm thinking florals because spring is just around the corner. I was also thinking about adding a little curtain to match to go below the bottom shelf. If I want to cover up where the utilities meet, um, if I have something back there that I don't want to see, kind of like this plug-in matches the curtain going in front of the machines. So let me know if you love this idea too. So I was thinking about finding a coat armoire that had a rod in it that I could hang up coats 
This would also need to be a seasonal thing so I could stash away a bin of winter coats because we don't need to have coats up here all the time. So an armoire, preferably with some shoe storage, um, something that we could put shoes in the bottom if it had a drawer or a space. And of course it would have to fit within the dimensions of this space so that I can still open up my dryer door. <laughs> shoe storage. Now I'm still wondering about this so if you've got some great ideas please pause the video and put them in the comments down below. Let me let me know what you think. But one of those things I was thinking about was a shoe or boot peg. Now I don't think I'm using the right words for this. I'll put a picture in here so that you can see what this looks like but this is definitely a DIY project something that we can put our muddy boots on. We live on acreage and it's coming up upon springtime and it's going to get muddy and gross. We need a place for our dirty farm boots to go. So I need a place for that. And for some finishing details, I would like to add a new rug in here. I'm thinking possibly of a rag rug. There's going to be a lot of mud. There's going to be a lot of dirt. So something that's really going to hold up here. I don't know if making a rag rug is insane. Let me know if you'd like to see me make a rag rug. I might just end up running to the store and grabbing something. But it would have to really coordinate with the blues, the floral, and the wallpaper. So let me know what you think about a rug. And lighting. I would love to do something that really is vintage, something that goes into the era of this old 1918 farmhouse. And so I will be looking for a vintage lighting. I know that there's lots of options that I could probably find in the thrift stores if I keep my eyes peeled. Um, I would have to redo the electrical on them, but I'm even up for doing something that's a little bit more of a statement piece, something that's a little bit more different. I really want to go with some brass or gold tones in, in this room, So, but that would really just be kind of like eye candy. Um, We'll see what the budget allows there. That's not going to be my top priority, but it would be great if I could find something that was beautiful and vintage. Now I'm excited to share every single part of this design and makeover with you guys. I'm going to share every single DIY, every one of these projects, and really take you along for every part of this makeover. So if that's something that you would totally be interested in, make sure you press that subscribe button so you don't miss a video. And if you are really looking for more DIY, budget-friendly home project and ideas, head on over to Capturing Wonderland and make sure you check out Julie's entry makeover design ideas as well. And she's got so many more ideas, you're gonna love it. I'm here every single week, every Friday, you can find me here on the channel, and I'll catch you next week. Love you lots, bye.